this training video provides instruction on how to use Digital Island Telepo desktop app. The video runs for approximately 15 minutes and covers essential features such as logging on, changing your password, presence, searching, making and receiving calls, transferring, call logs and voicemail. We recommend you watch the video in its entirety before using the Telepo desktop app. First, we'll cover logging into the Telepo app. The very first thing we'll need to do is change your password. This is done via your personal Telepo web portal. In your web browser, go to telo.digitalisland.co.nz and enter in the username and password that would have been emailed or texted to you. Then click Login. You are now into your personal page on the Telepo web portal. To change your password, click on My Profile, then enter in the same password used in the previous step into the Previous Password field and then enter a new password of your choosing into New Password and then the same into Retype Password. Click Change Password. Now you can open and log into the Telepo app. Open the app by clicking on the Mitel Telepo icon or choosing from the Start menu. Once you get to the Startup screen, enter telo.digitalisland.co.nz into the server address, enter your username into the username field and your new password into the password field. Click the login button. Next we'll cover the options menu and getting your initial settings right. Go into tools menu from the top menu bar and click options. Click the big audio icon then select the headset tab. Select your headset as the input and output devices. In most cases Leave the ringer device as system default. However, if you don't hear ringing on an incoming phone call, you may need to try different options or contact your IT support to check this. Now click on the speaker tab. If you use a personal conference device, such as Jabra Speak 410, then select this device for input, output and ringer devices. Otherwise, leave as default. Note that headset mode and speaker mode can be toggled with the button in the bottom left of your Telepo app. Generally, you should leave it in headset mode, as you can see here. Volume and mute is also set from here. Next, click on the general icon. Tick auto start so that Telepo always opens when you start up your PC. If you use Microsoft Outlook to manage your contacts, we recommend you also tick integrate with Microsoft Outlook. We also recommend that pop-up for incoming call is ticked. Now, on to advanced. A very handy feature that we recommend you enable is press F8 to dial. This means you can highlight a number from anywhere and just press F8 to dial. For example, if you go to a website and it has the company's phone number on it, just highlight that number, press F8 and Telepo will call that number. All other settings can stay as they are. Now on to views. There are two views that are commonly used with Telepo, the standard view and the attendant view. The main difference between the two is that the standard view has the call screen as one of the tabs, while the attendant view has the call screen always visible on a separate pane to the left. The standard view is recommended for most users as it takes up less room on the screen. However, if a user has to handle a lot of calls, then the attendant view may be useful. Next is your profile pic. Updating your picture, putting a face to the name, is always recommended. To do this, click on the profile button on the Telepo toolbar. This will take you to your profile page in the Telepo web portal. To change your photo, just click Change Photo, then Choose File, then browse to an appropriate picture of yourself. Click Save Photo to lock this in and on to presence. One of the more powerful features of Telepo is the ability to show and act on the presence status of users. Using presence, users can also check the availability of other staff at a glance, which allows for more efficient communication. To change your presence, just click on the current presence to the right of your name in the Telepo app and choose a status from the list. Normally, when you're at your desk, you would be available and if you're away from your desk, you should choose the status that best applies. 
You can also route calls based on different present states. To configure this, click on your present status, then choose Activity Diversion from the menu. Click the plus symbol to add a new diversion, choose the activity you would like to activate diversion on, then enter the number you would like calls to be diverted to. For example, you might want to divert calls to your mobile phone when you're on lunch. Now onto the search bar. The search bar is one of the most important aspects of Telepo. It gives the ability to search through your contacts and is also used to dial numbers. To search for a contact, just click on the search bar and start typing their name. After a few seconds, the contacts that best fit the search description will be displayed in the contacts list. You can also search by department. For example, type in sales and it will show all users in the company in the sales department. Also worth noting, if you have Outlook integration enabled, Telepo will search through your Outlook contacts and display the results. These contacts will appear under the separate heading Microsoft Outlook Search Result. Once you've located the contact you're searching for, you can either call their primary number straight away by clicking on the phone icon to the very right of their name, or you can expand the contact to show all of their contact details by clicking on their name. You can then dial any of the phone numbers shown by just clicking on the description beside the number. You can also dial a number directly by just typing it into the search bar, then hitting enter, or clicking the green phone icon. Call window. Once you've initiated or answered a call, the view will switch to the call window and you can see the status and details of the call. On the top left, it will show the other party's phone number. Beside this, if the call has come in via a hunt group or has been transferred by someone else, it will show where the call has come from. Below this, it will show the duration of the call. Also worth noting, at the bottom right of the call window, you will see a lock icon. This shows the call is encrypted. There are a number of functions you can use during a call. These are displayed as a row of icons in the call window. The first icon is the number pad. This is used for dialing in digits when a phone system prompts you to make a choice. For example, when you call a bank and must choose an option to proceed. The second item is the record button. This can be used to record the call that you're on. Next is the transfer button. This is used to transfer calls to other people. We'll come back to this in a minute. Next button is the conference button. You can use this to create an ad hoc conference simply by adding people into the call. Next is park. This is used to park a call in a queue so that other people in the organization can pick it up. Next is hold. This is used just to put the caller temporarily on hold. Next are the call answer, green phone, and call terminate, red phone. These are used to answer a call and end a call respectively. Next is the mute ringer button. This simply mutes the ringing of an incoming call. And last icon is the launch application button, which is only used in specialist scenarios. Below this row of icons is another great feature, the move this call feature. This allows you to move a live call off your desktop app to another device, usually your mobile. So if you take a call at your desk, but during the conversation you need to leave the office, you could move the call over to your mobile and carry on the conversation while walking out the door. You will notice that the call window in the desktop app will say you are currently speaking on your mobile after you have moved the call to mobile. So if you come back to your desk and want to retrieve the call back to your desktop app, just click on the underlined move here and the call will be retrieved back to your desktop. Let's jump back to the contacts field now. The first icon here is for texting the contact. If the contact has a mobile number configured, you can send them a text directly from Telepo. Just click on the icon, type in the message, and then hit send. Note that these text messages cost 15 cents per text. Next icon, chat. This is another very useful function for communicating with coworkers. Once again, just click on the icon, type in your message and hit send. And the last icon is to call the contact's main number. Now, on to transferring calls. Transferring calls is very easy once you know how. But, pay careful attention to the following 
and try testing it for yourself several times until you are familiar. There are two different ways to transfer calls. First is a blind transfer. This is when you transfer a call directly to someone else without any introduction. To do this, when you're on the call, simply click the transfer button, then type in a contact into the search bar, click transfer to here to the right hand side of the contact, then the number that you want to transfer to. The call will be immediately transferred through. The other way to transfer is an attended transfer. This is when you talk to the intended call recipient before you transfer the call through. To do this, follow the same procedure as the blind transfer, i.e. while on a call, click the transfer button and type a contact into the search bar. However, instead of clicking the transfer to here button, click the phone button beside the transfer button. This will then call the contact while the caller is on hold. You can then introduce the call and then activate the transfer by clicking on the transfer button in the call screen. Let's go over those two methods of transferring one more time. To transfer a call directly to someone, when on a call, click the transfer button, type in the contact, click on the transfer button, then the appropriate number. To transfer a call to someone with an introduction, click on the transfer button, type in the contact, click on the phone button, introduce the call, then click on the transfer button. Now we'll go through call log. Click on the log tab and it will show a list of your calls. If you want to see a history of all of your incoming and outgoing calls, click on the All button. If you want to see what calls you've missed, click the Missed Calls button. You can also access your voicemail inbox by clicking on the Inbox button. Voicemail. This brings us to the next section, Voicemail. When someone has called and left you a voicemail, it will give you a New Voicemail notification in the header section of the Telepo app. This includes a shortcut to your voicemail inbox. From here, you can see the list of your voicemails with any new ones in bold. To see details on the voicemail, just click on it, and then to listen to it, just click the play button. If you then want to delete the voicemail, click on the trash icon on the right. You can also call into your voicemail inbox by dialing 555. It will tell you if there are any new messages and will start playing them. While playing messages, you can delete the current message by dialing 7. To change your personal voicemail greeting, call into your voicemail box by dialing 555. Then press 5 to record a new personal greeting. The system will guide you through the process. Portal. And the last thing we're going to cover today is your personal Telepo portal. This web-based login gives you access to a lot of your personal settings and information, so you should make yourself familiar with this handy tool. To get into your portal, just click on the home icon in the Telepo application. This will fire up a website page and log you in automatically. Now you are in the portal, there is a lot of different things you can do, but today we will just take you through the most important stuff. First, click on the inbox in the top menu. This gives you a list of all the voicemails and recorded calls, the same as your inbox in the Telepo app. You can listen to voicemails and delete old voicemails. This page is also a very handy reference for commands while using dial-in voicemail. Next, click on Contacts in the top menu. In here, you can add or delete personal contacts. To add a new personal contact, just click Create New Contact under the External Contacts heading. You can also add or delete contacts from your favourites list. Your favourites are the contacts that are displayed by default in your Telepo app. Note that deleting contacts from your favourites list does not actually delete the contact, it just removes it from the list. Thanks for listening today and we hope you enjoy using your new Telepo app.